water fishermen are doing probably better here in, the, in this community right now than they did throughout the history of the, of the community, I would say, with respect to knowing that they have a, a plant that uh, seems to be fairly stable, uh, nothing to brag about with respect to profits and everything else, but holding our own in the industry at a time when many of the bigger uh, professional type people who have been around for many, many years are not able to do it. So it has to say something about the structure, the co-op structure here, it has to say something about the commitment of the members uh, the fact that they continue to support this operation, and it also has to say something about the plant workers. We plan to be here to stay. So now we get 12 board members. Every year we elect four new guys to it, and we always change around. And it's none of us are going to get a pocket full of money, because we don't, we don't get nothing from it, and walk away and leave the fishermen and fish for black horse, just leave them at the mercy of, of the wolves. Fishermen in this community have for a long, long time been organized around uh, strong fishermen's committees and uh, in the late 70s and coming into the early 80s we started to develop significant problems with respect to trying to dispose of our, of our catches and we are primarily a cod fishing community. Uh, so much so that uh, behind the scenes we started devising little strategies and plans as to how we were going to cope with the situations that we're facing as at the time for the most part outside people coming in, starting up operations, not showing too much concern for the fishermen, whether they could sell their fish or not, and only buying at random whenever they felt like it. Uh, coupled with that in the uh, late 70s and early 80s came a commercial squid fishery and a commercial caitlin fishery, which none of the fishermen in, the, in this community happened to believe should ever have, have ever have happened, but it did happen. And uh, that only expanded on our problem, so much so that most of the plants on the Avalon Peninsula started processing uh, Capelin because that was the most lucrative way to go uh, for many of the insure processing plants. And a lot of them were uh, processing uh, squid. So our problems with respect to selling fish became uh, tenfold. Uh, we had spent six, six to eight months devising a strategy, uh, using the political system and uh, going after government. And uh, we uh, eventually came to the conclusion that uh, to hell with the operations in the community, we had to put our own buildings and structures in place. We used some com community make work project funding to uh, put some uh, structures in place. The site we're in right now, the wharves, the breastworks, and everything else were didn't exist in uh, 1980. Uh, and uh, everything that you see around the community now, with, with, the, with the exception of the federal wharf, were all the, all the plan, the long-term plan of the fishermen's committee. And I guess we solicited all the fishermen in the community, came up with $500 per person, went to the banks, got a uh, commitment from the Minister of Fisheries on a license, and we started the ball rolling in 83, started putting some construction in place in the buildings and facilities you see today, five years after, which are probably worth two and a half to three million dollars. Back in the 60s, I guess, in the 70s, and right up, right up to the first part of the 80s, we were having a lot of problems here, like in Pity Harbor, not only Pity Harbor, I guess everywhere, trying to move codfish. Uh, companies are buying codfish only what they need for their own need, like it was 50, 60,000 pounds for that day, and that was it. They wouldn't, other plants took more fish, but they didn't truck none out. We had a problem we had, we fought with the union for to get oversized sales boats in, we were there at night, noon, in the morning, and that always seemed to be a hassle, a hassle. so we said, you know, we heard a lot about Fogo Island, so we decided to uh, talk about it. We said, let's make a trip to Fogo Island. We done that, and we said, we set up a cooperative. Not for us, uh, we like to make a lot of money, we're not, we're not, the main purpose was for us, fishermen could move their fish. And we asked our members, we said, we'd need uh, $500 a man to uh, put this together, and you know, this was the dream we had. And, Everybody seemed to go along with a lot of us were very optimistic of how many we get on I was uh, I figured we might get, you know, twenty, thirty, I could people out of figure would just put their hand and take up this five hundred and 
you know, I mean, Tom Best, Tom had a higher number than I did, but so we started in, I was the one responsible for uh, collecting the money, looking after it and everything. And people turned up with money to me like a few days before Christmas and rejoining Christmas. We had, we had a deadline of the 31st of January, they had to have this money. And everybody turned up, we had 88 members turn up with $500 each. It was unbelievable. People just, they dug down and got 500 which <laughs> they just didn't have to dig down to, right? But they came through it. And we started, uh, started, we started the ball rolling from there, so then when we approached government and other places uh, and looking for loans, banks are looking for loans, uh, it was hard to refuse. Uh, a group of fishermen had this initiative to go ahead and do something, collect $44,000. Plus we had, uh, it was original, I think it was the Niners, I believe it was, uh, put up uh, $2,000 each to purchase the land that the building sits on. So it was quite a commitment. So we started a co-op, there got to be a commitment. I think there was always commitment pretty hard, but now if you attended some of our meetings, whether it be a, a co-op me, uh, membership meeting or a fisherman's commi committee meeting, which we have them drawn trap boards now through the winter and that, you said, boy, God, you'll never settle those guys down. You think, you know, boy, there, nobody agrees. But when it comes down to an issue like concern of fishery, right in, we're into the fishery, some kind of crisis, fishermen will stick together. We've had pretty, pretty hard meetings, but when it comes to a final thing, so that's the, being able to draw, like, you call a meeting and draw those people together for a certain issue. Even though we've been, fellas been at one other's throat the odd time, they would come together like that. Volunteer labour was, like, to put a, a dollar figure on this structure here, uh, what they can give us on a book value uh, is, is nothing compared to what it could be put into sweat labour. Because every day we had some films here where people are doing work on this and they worked at night and noon in the morning whenever they got the opportunity. Everything free. You know, it costs very little, hardly anything in labour money for it at this building. For the black structure itself, it was masons put there. There are not fishermen on all the woodwork. And it was uh, quite, extens quite a, a, an extensive <coughs> amount of work. We, uh, I remember after we put the first part here and we had to build on the office here and then we went up for putting the, the dry storage and, uh, and the cold storage there. And we, we called a group of people together and just, you wouldn't know what you were paying them, 20 bucks an hour the way they turned up. All you want was hammers and saws. Most people bought their own. But it was a, it was a, trem a tremendous amount of togetherness, and this was, I guess, kept us where we are here today so far.